Wow, this is the view that people see when they first walk into your house. Here's a beautiful de Kooning, late de Kooning. Imagine waking up every morning to Philip Guston's celebrated painting, The Coat, or passing Mark Rothko's masterful work, Pink and White Over Red, on your way to the kitchen. This has been the life of Bay Area art collectors Harry W. and Mary Margaret Anderson. Best known by their college nicknames, Hunk and Moo, they have been collecting art for almost half a century. It's called Dumb Compass. And to tell you the truth, I have never been able to associate the title of this with the work itself. Terry has always started his early works were little amoebas, as though you were looking through a telescope. The couple own hundreds of paintings and sculptures by renowned 20th century American masters that most of us would see only in books, magazines, or museums. Artists like Clifford Still, Willem de Kooning, and Franz Klein. Here's the Klein, which is what we call the, the snowman. Action painting is all done with that big, huge brush stroke. You're surrounded by all these wonderful works of art. Talk about your passion for art. A painting does have something to say to each and every one of us, depending upon us looking at art. And that's where the reaction between the painting and the feeling you have that, yes, I've got to have it. I think that we have kind of an eye for looking at nature, for looking at design, and I think for looking at art. They've never had a curator for the collection. It's the mistakes of Hunk and Moo Anderson that make this thing go, and it, it sort of built on itself like a tumbleweed. This is Putter's favorite painting, Bazziotti's, yes. that we're still giving away. The Andersons met in college in upstate New York. In 1948, Hunk and two friends founded Saga Foods, a highly successful food service company. The couple married in 1950. They have one daughter, Mary Patricia, affectionately known as Putter. Early on, art had little impact in their lives. That changed in 1964, during a trip to Paris. It started at the Louvre, and it kind of enlightened us. Funded by the success of Saga, the Andersons started collecting early Impressionist work. Monet, Passero, Rodin, and so forth. But they soon decided to change direction. We became sort of enamored by the idea of putting together a great collection of the American abstract expressionists. They also began collecting other works, such as California funk art and post-minimalism. Their selection process was based on a simple two-question approach they call head and hands. Head, have you ever seen this before in art? The answer is no. And could you have made it? Courier is just known for his head and his hand and thinking about extremely different things. One of the keys to the couple's success is their focus on building personal relationships. This was the case when they acquired Jackson Pollock's Lucifer. It's a breakthrough painting. Most of his paintings are numbered, but he, he personally gave the title of this to Lucifer, God's Fallen Angel. It took them two years to get the previous owner, Joe Hazen, to sell them the painting. And it was only after we had gotten to know he and Lita Annenberg, his wife, that he was willing to sell us this work. We were interviewed. And we had to pass muster, and, and Lita came out here to see where this was hanging. Back then, the painting was hung in the most unlikely place, in their daughter Putter's bedroom. This is where I slept with Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> he was over my bed for several years. Did you even know what that was? I did not know what that was, and neither did any of my girlfriends who spent the night here. <laughs> Some of the strongest relationships the Andersons built were with the artists themselves. One of the family's more treasured mementos is an autograph book that Putter still keeps in her old room. When artists would come to the house, we would ask them to sign their autograph. Clifford Still was the first in oh, 1974, wonderful. and Frank Stella. For Putter, Bob Rauschenberg came. As the Anderson collection grew, art overflowed out of their home and found its way into the Saga offices. Today, the Menlo Park location is now called Quadris. Hunk still has an office there and goes daily. How many years has this been here? Ten years. I've had it every day come to work. 
It's been a joy in my life. Well, it's one of, it's one of Wayne Thiebaud's best paintings. In 2011, the Andersons announced their donation of 121 pieces to Stanford University. The university immediately began building a dedicated museum. Matthew Tews is executive director of art programs at Stanford. Obviously, this gift to Stanford is an enormous, enormous um, addition to our arts initiative here on campus. And it really is a, a gift not just to Stanford, but to the public, because it really will be available for free to anyone who comes and visits it. Over the years, the family has gifted significant portions of their collection to institutions like the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Neil Benezra, who's overseeing SF MoMA's expansion as its director, is quite familiar with the Anderson Collection. He was once their intern. They've really focused enormously and brilliantly on California art. Some of the greatest painters that this state has ever produced have been very avidly collected by the Andersons. And Lucifer, of all the Pollocks in private hands, it may be the most important. So it's a tremendous treasure for, for Stanford to have. We have these models to show where we're at. This is kind of the entranceway. Behind that are all of the abstract expressionists, and we're ready to go. So where does this sizable gift leave the Andersons? We've lived with the art for 40 years and have enjoyed it very much. But I think that it's also our responsibility to try to enhance what I call the human experience. And this art belongs to the world. That should not be denied. As for collecting, that's in their blood. We're inviting you to come back in another year, and you will see an entirely different house, an entirely different studio, and it'll be all new art.